and still today, I think I probably gravitate toward Paul's letters and the Gospels. And I think for most Christians who aren't, you know, professional biblical scholars being paid to read it, as it were, um, I think the New Testament is the place to start. Sometimes I'm asked, you know, where should I start in reading the Bible? And I always say, well, start with the first books in the New Testament to be written, which means First Thessalonians and Galatians, which are older than the, than the Gospels, and read those and learn what the early church was like just 20 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And then move on to the Gospels, which were written a bit later, but obviously rest on memories of them. And only then turn to the Old Testament. I, I, that, that's the sort of advice I would speak. And obviously, if, if the person in question is Jewish, then they're going to be concentrating on the Old Testament and they'll read, as of almost the Torah, the, 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 the Pentateuch, books of Moses. But for a Christian, I think the New Testament is the natural place to start. I, 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 my heart sinks when people say I've decided to read through the whole Bible this year, starting with Genesis. So I think that you'll, you'll probably give up in the middle of Leviticus. Like a New Year's resolution, you know, yeah. by about the 30th of January, it's beginning to get a bit shaky. And, <laughs> and you won't get to the, to the really central things. You won't get to Isaiah, you won't get to the Psalms, and you won't get to the New Testament. And I think if people want to read the whole Bible through, they should at least, you know, read alternately chapters of the Old and New Testament, rather than trying to go right through the whole thing from the beginning, which is a daunting prospect because it is so long. And not the most helpful way of doing it. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes, like, when we take on these, like, tasks of, like, I have this goal, I want to read through the Bible, and you, you get your Bible reading plan, and it's all good intentions. Like, you just you just want to get through it, but you're right. You get to these points in the Old Testament, like Leviticus or Numbers, and I feel like I'm just reading words at this point. Like, I'm just kind of, like, rolling through and kind of like, okay, I'm just, I just need to get through it. But... Some of these, a lot of the Bible, like there is so much there and like we don't have the cultural understanding of what's happening in the text. We can just, we're so distant from it. It's almost like, am I, I'm not even like getting it. Like I'm just like reading the words, but I don't really understand the impact and what this actually means. I think that's right. I mean, I, I'm very lucky because I think the Bible is a great and very interesting book and I've actually been employed to study it and teach it. Um, and, and therefore I can look at Leviticus or I can look at numbers and think I've got a clear profile in my head of what the book is like. I know what to get out of it and what to go to it for. But the average Christian hasn't got time to spend thinking, have I really got the right take on numbers? They need to read the Gospels, if I can put it that way. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sound patronizing as though good enough for them. But what I'm saying is that, that to be able to read the whole Bible with real devotion and interest is a luxury and implies more time than most people have got to spend on it. And if you have got limited time, then you go for the most important bits. And that does mean what, again, Lutherans sometimes call the canon within the canon, mm-hmm. which is the central books like the Gospels and Paul and certain Old Testament books like Psalms, um, but not the more obscure bits of Leviticus, which are yeah. fascinating, but, you know, not, not the place to start. 